All right, so a quick overview of what we're going to be covering today is it's really about stack ups. Uh, it's also about controlling your uh, crosstalk and keeping a rein on EMI. Uh, what kind of considerations you should have for choosing the materials? Uh, what what role does that play into the manufacturing uh, side of things, especially different manufacturing tolerances? Uh, and then I think this is always popular, the difference between class two and class three is people are putting more things into space. And, uh, um, you know, there's some class two boards that really should be class three. Um, and I'd like to talk about that a little bit. And then we end with some um, example stack ups and how uh, they are being, they would be built within a factory. Okay, so we have to start with the bread and butter, right? So stack ups are really PCB stack ups are made up of cores and prepregs. And a core is basically fiberglass um, with epoxy and then copper on either side of that. And that is a C stage material where it will not uh, melt under pressure or temperature rise. So that's a core. And we buy those from the material vendors. Uh, so if you have a core that is uneven copper, let's say one ounce on one side and three ounces on another, chances are we probably don't have that core in stock and we would have to procure it from the distributor of, the, um, of that material. So cores, uh, that's the reason to understand cores and how they sit within your stack up. Second, uh, stack ups are made out of prepregs, which are basically uh, B-stage uh, material, B-stage uh, fiberglass with uh, resin. And so B-stage melts during the lamination process, which glues all the copper layers together. And so in that melting process, materials move around and shift, uh, which causes a um, registration issue. And so in order to avoid registration issues, we scale the images of each individual layer. And so how we build the board completely, the stack up and how we build it completely plays a role into how we scale it and our build strategy. So uh, that's basically, in a nutshell, if you have a complicated stack up, talk to your fabricator to understand how they're going to build it, what's the build strategy, and what kind of challenges might be faced uh, during manufacturing. There's sometimes there can be design concessions that can be made early on that really save everyone a lot of time and uh, cost. So just some quick bullet points, um, you know, as the prepreg will melt, it fills the peaks and valleys of the copper. And so if you have a heavy copper board, you would need probably a higher resin content or let's say more prepregs um, to fill those peaks and valleys. So you don't end up with a, any kind of resin starvation or DLAM scenario. Um, if you have heavier copper, always, uh, you know, design with wider traces and spaces. So that's in the, uh, these are a couple of considerations for every copper board, let's say with, uh, you know, power applications. And if you want to minimize skin effect, you can also choose uh, copper foils that have a low, uh, low teeth, they call it. So when you're selecting your materials, you have your data sheet and then you have your manufacturing. Manufacturing is really not represented on the data sheet. So don't just pick your materials based on the electrical properties, include your fabricator to understand how that material will, is buildable. So for example, we have electrical considerations, thermal considerations, let's say calf, whether the material is calf resistance, and is that important to you? And then your mechanical strength of, of the material. One example that happened recently is that the 
the board was going into a little bit higher, um, let's say a little bit more rough environment with vibration and temperatures cycling. And the material chosen was, you know, completely a standard material. Well, don't do that because it's not conducive to the environment that, you know, that, um, that you're that you're subjecting the board to so the reliability would be less and if a board leaves the factory and it's electrically good both at the pcb bear stage as well as the assembly stage your manufacturer kind of is done with that ownership now it belongs to the customer to make sure that board is reliable so certain certain things like material selection uh and is not it, it determines reliability over time. So any material that you pick is going to have to withstand the manufacturing process. So if you have multiple laminations, those are multiple thermal excursions. If you have assembly on top and bottom, more uh, thermal excursions. If you have um, secondary process like uh, wave solder, another thermal excursion. So does the material you pick withstand your manufacturing process? And then um, is it the right material for it to get you the reliability that you're looking for? For lead-free, we recommend a higher temp material. Um, FR406 should be okay. Um, 370HR is always better. Um, and, uh, but it's not just that. Really understand all the thermal excursions or board is going to have to go through. Okay, so uh, layer layer arrangement is important as well. So just uh, as some quick examples, in the first stack of the signal layers are adjacent to each other, and that is definitely prone to crosstalk and EMI. Uh, and the ground plane is further away from the signal layers. In the second example, the clearance between the power and ground plane is very high, and there's a split in the power plane. So the third stack up is really, let's say, the best, uh, would perform the best. So place signal and reference planes as close as possible together. Uh, do not place signal layers next to each other. Avoid split reference planes. Uh, couple of the power planes with ground planes for low inductance distribution. These are some of the basics. So why do you need to place signal layers close to ground planes? So just as a quick uh, bread and butter, a transmission line consists of a trace and its return path, and the image shows a strip line configuration of a transmission line with ground layers on top and bottom. When the energy is applied to the transmission line, the EM field travels through the dielectric space and flows to the neighboring copper if there's a low impedance path. But this field is not regulated, it leads to signal integrity issues. So have less dielectric spacing between the ground and signal planes to reduce the impedance of your signal path. And an unbroken ground plane for microstrip helps contain the EM field. So here's another example um, how adjacent signal layers create EMI issues. So when the EM field from layer one passes through layer two to reach the reference plane on layer three, it gets coupled with layer two EM field. This coupling can induce a common mode current, which can lead to EMI. Redesigning the stack up is the best way to avoid this. If you don't want to change the stack up, Route traces are orthogonally between the two layers and add copper pour and ground trace on layer one reduce the severity. So routing signals um, over a split plane will also cause signal integrity issues. If you'd like to route a signal on the power plane, make sure the trace is not passing through the split. And that's shown in the, in the image below. <clears throat> 